Good morning all, new printed circuit boards from JLC PCB and so let's get straight into the box and here they are and uh, we seem to have this reel of tape here which says JLC PCB on it. Yeah, it's like a masking tape I suppose. Now does that mean that we're not going to get the magnifying glasses anymore? I hope not because um, I have these but I don't have the green one yet or indeed the white one. However, in this box, I have some green PCBs and some white PCBs. So let's start with the white PCB. Now this is a power supply baseboard. Let's open this up. Uh, I've got five of these because I really only need one. And the idea of this is that I can put two of these 805 connectors on here and I've sat them really quite close to each other like that if I can get those pins to go in the holes yeah so like that I wanted it quite compact and these take my little power distribution boards but it occurred to me when I was looking at all the boards in my project that I'm going to need 14 connections because there are 14 boards uh, two of them are 4-pin because they've got 5 volt as well as 12 and 0 and minus 12. But I also need another 7 of these 3-pin connectors. Now, fortunately, and this was more by luck than judgment really, um, I can simply put a 3-pin connector in that position instead of a 4-pin. And that gives me the 12 3-pin connectors I need and the two 4-pin connectors. Now obviously these aren't going to sit um, in like that when it's got the connectors on. So I've designed the layout on the underside of this. With these whiteboards, of course, you can't see the tracks, can you? But um, so this one fits in that way around. And the other, the other one will actually fit in back to back with it. So they'll sit like this. And then all the wires will simply come off here and go to the various boards on the back of my vocoder project but uh, yeah that's just a baseboard for power distribution now what i've done here is i've laid out um, some terminal block holes and i think the terminal blocks are here so let's have a look at these yeah these are uh, two tenths of an inch or 5.08 millimeter spacing terminal blocks so interesting to see how well those fit in the board. I'm hoping these are the ones that slide together. Let's try that. Yes, they do. They uh, have little um, uh, dovetail tongue and groove things there. Uh, the only thing I've done is I've only bought two pin and I think this is seven pins across here. So I'm gonna need to buy some three pin of these so that I can make up the full seven. And on this side, there are nine. Now the purpose of these is to interface with a couple of power supplies I've got. So this is one of them, which has um, a minus adjustable, a plus adjustable, a five volt and a 3.3. Well, I don't need the 3.3. There are a bunch of grounds there, but I've designed this, well, if I had the extra connector, simply to fit directly opposite this. So uh, I can put little wire links in here, connect this board to my power supply and have a full distribution of 14 cables going off to all my circuit boards. Now this is the other power supply I bought, which has the nine connectors. You can see it's got plus and minus five, plus and minus 12, and actually plus and minus 15, as well as on that one. I'm not sure whether I'm gonna use that one, but I thought I'd make this board compatible with both. So if I want to use that other power supply, um, I simply put nine connectors in here, spin this round and then that will interface with that other power supply. This is probably the power supply I'm going to use for the final project because it's got um, the bigger uh, switch mode chips on here so it looks like it's good for an amp on each power supply. So yeah that's my power base for distribution to 14 printed circuit boards. Well it's because I hadn't done a white PCB before and this one's not really part of the project so it's just going to sit kind of outside. Um, I've previously done 
black, this is the matte black for my LED board for the LM3915. Um, I did red for these little um, Opto decoy boards for my Muppet 2 project. Uh, I did yellow, of course, which were the boards um, for the op amp driver for the LED bar graph. And, oh, I have got blue somewhere. Now, where's that? Ah, yes, the blue ones, which are the PWM5 Femto version 2, are still unopened. And I've kind of been putting off uh, opening these and building them up because, of course, these are largely surface mount. I don't know whether we can see that. Yeah, it's mostly surface mount parts on here. Um, and I kind of know that's going to be quite a lot of work. But have you seen this? On JLC PCB's homepage, we have this new thing, SMT Assembly. Have your PCB assembled in 24 hours with our in-stock 30,000 plus SMD parts coming soon. So maybe if I put that off a little bit longer, assembling those blue boards, I can actually get them done for me. So yes, hopefully soon I should be able to send uh, this job again um, and as well as having the boards made I can send them a bill of materials and a component placement file and actually get parts pre-assembled onto the boards. That would be uh, very cool. So because I don't have um, any three pin terminal blocks there's probably not much point starting to assemble this and in any case I kind of want to keep these connectors uh, free because I use them for two different things and uh, I want to use them for my vocoder filter boards. Where are they? Yeah, this one which I've added a few more components to since my uh, live stream. So these connectors go here and then I've got a filter board coming uh, which plugs into there as a daughter board. And the whole point of having pluggable daughter filter boards is so that you can mix all the filters up so that the speech filters don't match the music filters. That's going to sound awesome. So let's put these uh, back in here. So moving on to the other board uh, that I got. This one, potentiometer offset board. So once again, this is only um, really a one-off board. So I had five made, the minimum order quantity. Let's have a quick look at this. It really is simplicity itself. It's my pot offset board and I don't know whether you can see the tracks. I'll get in a bit closer. Yes, there are just nine tracks linking this set of three holes for a potentiometer to this set of three holes and that's for the excitation board. I'll go and get it. So on my front panel you can see here this is the excitation board. There are four pots on the top but there are also, on the bottom, uh, three potentiometers which go here. Here's a switch. It's supposed to be a two-position switch, but I found this three-position switch, which kind of works. These are the LM3915s for the uh, LED bar graph boards. And a number of these boards have these uh, quarter-inch jack sockets hanging underneath them, which makes them very nice and rigidly fixed to the front panel. Whereas this one's a little bit flexible but it won't be once I get my three underside pots on. But because they are offset into this second row of holes, it needs this little potentiometer offset board. Uh, which way is it going to go? It's going to go that way, I think. To just sit there and uh, provide the holes a little bit further down for these bottom pots. So I want to get this board out. Now it's quite tricky because First thing I've got to do is take these boards out, which are the LED bar graph boards, and then these little nut and bolt assemblies just fall off. So let's get that one out. Let's get this one out. I think I'm going to have to slide these nuts and bolts out on this one. Take off these four knobs on the potentiometers. Find my spanner. Now, oh, where is it? And undo the four pots on here. Oh, the middle one's 
are loose and take these nuts off. So I need uh, a couple of A 10Ks and I need a B 10K because the pots on the bottom are identical to the ones on the top. Right, I have those, that's good. A B10K linear and some A10K logarithmics. So let's um, solder these into the offset board. Right, I think I might do these with blue tack to hold the pot in alignment. Oh, I haven't broken off that tab, have I? I shall have to do that. Crack off that little tag on the side because I'm not using those to index the pots. So I'll just solder the middle leg in I think while the pot's hanging on this pot board. This is the B10K isn't it? Yeah they're both A so that's fine. Let's get that soldered in. No ground plane obviously on this board because <laughs> well I didn't really need it. Uh, okay so that's that. Let's see if I can extract the blue tack. Yeah that's easy enough. And then just bend the pot so that it's uh, square on the board. You've got to do it in three dimensions. Square on the board, uh, rotationally square. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, what was the other dimension? I can't remember. Okay, so I can solder the other two feet or pins on this. Like so. And then let's get the two uh, 10K log pots on there. So there are the three pots on my pot offset board. Now these two boards uh, are going to be sitting quite close to each other. So like I've done on here where I've trimmed down um, these pots because they do the pot pins, they stick out a little bit. I'm going to trim these down on the offset board as well quite flush, obviously not trying to scrape all the solder and pad away, but pretty flush to the board because I have a feeling these two boards are going to be within about a tenth of, in of an inch of each other. So those can sit quite close to each other now without touching, so they fit in my one and a quarter inch spacings on the front panel. Now I'm thinking to link these holes through with these holes uh, I'm thinking DuPont headers. So these are on a 0.2 inch spacing. So I'm going to break off five at a time. Three lots of five pins. And then I'm going to pull out the in-between pins so that I've got three pins in a plastic holder spaced at two tenths of an inch. And then with these arrays resting in here, I've got to place this over the top of it. But I've not soldered them in, so they're all wobbling around a bit. Right, there they are. Now, of course, the pins are too long and they're fouling on the underside of these pots. So I think I'm going to have to just cut these pin lengths down. Now, I'm not going to do this with these new flush cutters because I've heard they're quite brittle on the end. So I'll use my older cutters, but uh, oh yeah, that's quite tough. Just want to cut those down so they're about equal lengths on both sides, like so. Because I'm thinking that the offset between the two boards is going to be about the thickness of this plastic. I don't know for sure, but it uh, should be about right. And so with those pin arrays sandwiched between the two boards, I'm going to offer this back up to the front panel, um, try and get all these pots centered in their holes, and then with it on the front panel, start soldering these uh, DuPont headers. They're quite tricky to get to because they're under the pots, but we'll see how we go. I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to be able to film. Yeah, so I've tried to eyeball the position of these pots in their holes and try and get them as centered as I can while locking some of them up. And the two boards are a little bit further apart than I thought they were going to be. Uh, you can see that the little plastic 
thing there slides up and down a little bit. But I think what I'm going to do is anchor all the pots now, turn this upside down and solder the tops of these first because they're much easier to get to. Right, all the pots are anchored on the front panel with their nuts. And I'm going to, as I say, solder on the top of here. That means these little arrays have dropped down onto the main board, which I suppose, yeah, I suppose that's about right. Because these are much easier to get to. They don't protrude very much now, but that's fine. And then soldering on this side, I'm probably going to have to take these three ICs out because they're kind of obscuring my use of the iron. So let's get that done. This gap in here looks just a tiny bit lopsided, slightly larger gap there than over there. But I've checked um, a couple of the pots and they're still central to their holes. So, I mean, I suppose, you know, it's designed to absorb small errors. So it's got to be right. Time to uh, rest this on two reels of sellotape and get these arrays soldered in. Right, now to solder these, which is going to be well tricky, particularly the middle pin because it's under the lowest part of the pot. So I can probably get to these two side pins without too much difficulty. Well, I could if I could see what I was doing. I think the sun's just gone in, which is making it really dark. I'll tell you what, let's put my overhead lights on. See if that helps. Uh, let's do this end one. Yes, it really is quite difficult to see what I'm doing. I think I might be touching the plastic on the back of the pots. Well, that's the outer two done there. And I suppose if I do all the outer ones, I could take this off the panel and then it would be easier to get to I don't want to melt those trimmers. Yeah, I might um, do the three middle connections, which are directly under the pots. They're quite hard to get to uh, with it off the front panel. So the point about pedantically getting these all centered in their holes is that now that the whole assembly is kind of locked together, I wanted there to be still a little wiggle room within the front panel. And there is. So that looks good. And here it is removed from the front panel and uh, you can see how it, it's slightly um it looks like these pots are slightly tilted in but i'm not sure that these tops are particularly flat i mean they were anchored hard to the front panel so i'm sure it's all fine and you know the whole purpose of this is to accommodate misalignments and things like that but um and certainly when this is on the front panel and bolted on this board has very little movement in it it's very rigid uh, so all I'm trying to do now is just get my iron under the centre of these pots to do that centre pin. It's quite hard to see in this light, but this should be my best chance to get this done. So let's give the iron a good clean for this. Don't want any straggly bits of solder. Right, through the middle of this chip socket, into there. Oh, I'm melting the uh, pot cover. If I can get some solder on there. Yep, that one's done. Oh, this one's got two chip sockets in a row. Yep, that one's in. Let's just redo this one. It didn't quite finish. Okay, I think they're done. And I think I'm quite happy with that. Right, so offering this uh, assembly back up to the front panel. I'm going to go into these holes and it still have a little bit of wiggle room, which it does. So those are my two PCBs for today. My uh, little power distribution baseboard, which uh, is designed to meet up with the various multi-voltage power supplies I've got. And the little potentiometer offset board, which is now sitting on here, giving this board its seven potentiometers. So uh, that's it for today. Cheerio.